You have your NAS and the computer set up, but you're still not getting the speeds that you thought you'd be able to. Uh? You know there's a reason, and probably a simple one too, but you just don't know what it is. Well, let me firstly say, you're right, and secondly, let me show you what you can do about it right now. Hey, welcome to Digipro Tips. I'm Andy Edmondson, and here we work smarter, not harder, which gives you time to be more creative. Now, how do I know what I'm talking about here? Well, I've been the head of video and head of studio production for a number of companies, and I've set up multiple user editing workflows that allowed for the vast amounts of content that was flowing through every day. Scaling to meet those demands was something of a trial and error process, and I can save you that headache right now, allowing you to work smarter, not harder. You're here because you more than likely have come to a bottleneck in your networking capabilities, right? It was fine when it was just you and an assistant or maybe a handful of you. So what's happened now that you've expanded? Just like you, I was asking the same like head scratching question when I expanded my team and it increased the storage to match. I just wasn't getting the speeds advertised. It wasn't for a few very painful weeks later that I stumbled upon the answer after changing different settings on my NAS, on the different computers. And I found it was actually my network switch and cabling. We needed a 10 gigabit ethernet network. Yep, that's right, pro tippers. It was nothing to do with the NAS and the computer setup whatsoever. It was all about the bandwidth capabilities of our office network, the network switch and the cabling that goes to the NAS, how much data that can carry and transmit. So what was the next step? Well, it was to update our switch to a 10 gigabit switch and then to update all the old cabling from Cat5 to Cat6A. Why? Why did I need to do this? Well, you see, switches and cables have been like capped at gigabit ethernet for like a decade. No one needed to go above that and it was a very good speed for everybody. But it now maxes out for people that are using it for this use case at 100 megabytes per second, which just isn't fast enough. We therefore need a switch and cabling that can handle 10 times, 10 times that bandwidth. And that's 10 gigabit. So let's look at what you need and how to set it up. Firstly, as I mentioned, you need a 10 gigabit switch. Now you have to think carefully about this one because they're not the cheapest. They're nowhere near as cheap as a gigabit switch. And you need to assess how many ports you're gonna need now and in the future. You want to make sure that you're getting enough ports for everybody that needs access to the 10 gigabit network right now, and anybody or anything that you might be adding onto that in the future. You also want to think about what level of interaction you want to have with it, whether it's unmanaged or managed, I'll get onto that in a second, and whether it's rack mounted or like on your desktop. So what's this managed, unmanaged thing? Well, if you're an IT person and you feel comfortable with that and you want to make sure that the bandwidth from that switch is going to the right people, then I'd say go with a managed switch. But for beginners, people that just want it to work, just go with an unmanaged switch. So we've got our switch, let's connect everything up. So first, take an ethernet connection from your router into your network switch. That's one port, gone. But this allows every other device to connect to the internet through this one port which is a handy thing to have, right? Next, connect your NAS, whether it's got one 10 gigabit ethernet port or two, connect them to the switch, and then connect all of the PCs to the switch as well. What you'll notice is when they are turned on and connected to the switch, there'll be different lights depending on the speeds that they are getting. With a 10 gigabit switch, they are getting 10 gigabit speeds when the light is green. If it is amber, yellow, orange, they're not getting 10 gigabit, they're probably only getting gigabit, which means either there's something wrong with the cabling, which we're gonna move on to, or it's something wrong with the computer itself, which we'll also get onto. So everything's connected and switched on. This should solve everything, right? Well, yes and no. To go back to the story, it did, but only for the editors that were working on the newest computers. Oh, oh why? I thought this would solve everything. The next and final, luckily, piece of the puzzle presents itself at this point. Your computers need to be able to handle the 10 gigabit connections as well. Of course. So my editors and motion designers that were working on new Macs were getting amazing speeds out of the NAS because they had 10 gigabit ethernet network cards inside them. So to overcome this particularly annoying issue, I had to do some digging, I had to do some research and find out how we could adapt the older PCs and Macs to be able to accept the 10 gigabit ethernet connections and get that blazing fast speed from the NAS. 
Now I found a few different options and each is preferable in different situations and setups. The first one I found is to get a Thunderbolt 3 to 10 gigabit ethernet adapter from like QNAP or Sonnet and use those to bridge the gap. I've used both in the past and for reliability purposes, hands down the QNAP one wins. Now this works because Thunderbolt 3 ports are capable of carrying 10 gigabit speeds. Whereas USB 3.0, say, the most common connection on computers, is not capable of those speeds. But then another issue arose because some of the older Windows PCs didn't have Thunderbolt 3 ports. So my next step was to find 10 gigabit network cards that I could install into the Windows PCs connected via a PCI slot. That will get those PCs up and running at 10 gigabit speeds. If you're gonna do this, please check your warranty to make sure that it's not void by doing this. In my case, it didn't and it was easy to do, so it was well worth investing in. And then, oh, I was so nearly there apart from one junior editor that was working on a very old Mac that didn't have Thunderbolt 3, I couldn't put a network card in it. I had one option left to me and that was to use USB 3 and accept the fact that I would not be getting 10 gigabit speeds but USB 3 can carry 5 gigabit speeds so with a QNAP adapter for 5 gigabit to USB that's exactly what I got and that was actually plenty of bandwidth for that particular editor to be working with because they weren't doing any heavy lifting. Okay so now I had cracked it. I had a team of 10 post-production staff all editing in real time at 4K from an ass at 10 gigabit speeds. I have to say, I really didn't look back after that. The team were all super happy with their new improved speeds and I was able to deliver projects faster and not have to deal with those bottlenecks anymore. So save yourself the headaches that I went through and follow these options to get yourself a 10 gigabit network of your own so that you can work smarter, not harder. This is what it's all about. And don't worry if you're thinking, I have no clue about networking. How am I gonna set all of this up? Well, don't worry because most of this is actually plug and play. Let's take a look at some of the equipment and the price points of them so that you can assess what investment levels you might need to do this. At the very heart of this setup is the network switch. It's the brains of the operation. It's what allows your editor's computers to communicate with the NAS at high speed and deliver the information to each computer at the same time. There are varying sizes of switches from small to large to accommodate all sizes of post-production teams. 10 gigabit ethernet switches do cost more than gigabit switches do, it's just a fact. But the investment in 10 gigabit cannot be underestimated. Now there are different makes and models of 10 gigabit switches, both managed and unmanaged. I'm gonna start with QNAP because they make some great models that are extremely capable and reliable in my experience. I'm gonna put links to all of the switches and adapters in the description of the video, so take a look there and you might even find some deals too. So the lowest port number for a 10 gigabit switch that I would start with is probably an eight port. Even if it's just you and one other editor or an assistant, you're gonna want space for future proofing yourself down the line. If you expand, if there's other equipment that needs to access the NAS at 10 gigabit speeds, you don't wanna be stuck with four ports. That's really gonna restrict you. Eight ports should allow up to four editors plus connection to your router and to your NAS if it's got dual connection as well, and all have access at the same time. So an eight port QNAP 10 gigabit switch such as the QSW 12088C retails for around about $840 and that's the lowest entry really into 10 gigabit ethernet networking. The next step up is to go with like 12 or 16 ports. You'll probably need to start shopping around at this point and brands such as Ubiquiti, Netgear, um, they start to come in uh, to their own at these levels, these sizes of switches. And if you find a switch that you like and works well for your needs, then please do let others know in the in the comments below. You know, this is, this is all community sharing information, so that would be great if you could do that. A 12 port 10 gigabit switch, such as the Netgear XS5112EM, retails for around $1,150, for example. If you have a team that's got more than 10 post-production people in it, such as I did, then you will need higher than 16 ports. It's just not gonna cut it because if you've got all of those people, potentially extra hires and freelancers, you might even need to be connecting into other switches that the rest of the office 
connect to at gigabit speeds, that takes an extra port. You have dual connection to your NAS. You might even have another uh, NAS as backup. There's all of these factors to take into account and 16 ports won't cut that. The next step up is really to go with 28. And at this point, you'll want to go from unmanaged to managed because when you've got this amount of traffic all going through your switch, you want to make sure that you are using it in the most efficient way as possible. You want to make sure that the bandwidth for your post-production stuff, your editors and your motion designers and your sound designers, they're all getting the speeds from the NAS that you want them to have, whereas everybody else, such as your researchers, uh, your set designers, whoever it might be, your runners, they don't need those speeds. Some create VLANs, throttle their bandwidth, and make sure that it's going to the people that need it. The XS728T retails for around about $2,400. As I mentioned before, once you start to go down the path of 10 gigabit ethernet networking, you are gonna to need to upgrade your cabling if it's currently Cat5 or Cat5e. Those cables max out at 100 megabytes per second, which is not fast enough, it's not enough bandwidth for your NAS to communicate with the computers at 10 gigabit speeds. Really, you want to be at Cat6a at the very least. There are a ton of different brands that all have varying lengths and speeds advertised, and it changes in countries as well. So check what you can get around you, or you can buy it online. I've bought tons of cables online, but make sure that they're from a quality source. Don't buy cheaper cables because you will regret it down the line. You won't get the speeds advertised. I've also done that in the past. Don't do it. So a piece of the puzzle that is incredibly important and one that I completely overlooked, as I mentioned earlier, is the fact that your PCs and your computers, your Macs, whatever it might be, they all need to be able to accept 10 gigabit connections as well. And so for newer PCs and Macs, that won't be a problem. They generally are starting to come as standard with 10 gigabit ethernet cards in them. But your older ones, you know, even just a few years ago, they're still gonna have gigabit ports on them. So we need to upgrade that. We need adapters or network cards to make that happen. For Windows PCs, because Macs don't allow you to upgrade the network cards inside them, but PCs generally do, you're gonna need a new network card that connects via PCIe. So you're gonna need to make sure that you have a PCIe slot available on your motherboard. This will allow your PC to connect to the NAS at 10 gigabit speeds rather than the usual gigabit connection. So you'll need to use this new port over the gigabit connection. The QNA QXG 10G2TB is a trusted 10 gigabit PCIe card and that retails for around, I think it was about $120, but you need to check that. For Mac users, predominantly the best option is to go with a Thunderbolt 3 adapter, such as the QNAP one or the Sonic that I showed you. I would definitely go with the QNAP if you can afford it because the reliability is, is, is just so much better, though it is a little bit dearer than the Sonnet adapter. The QNAP adapter retails for around about $275. If your PC or Mac is older than both a networking card and a Thunderbolt 3 adapter, then you really are gonna be stuck with going USB. And so again, as I mentioned earlier in the video, the QNAP USB to five gigabit ethernet adapter is a very, very good option to go with. This adapter has been tried and tested by myself multiple times, and it retails for around about $110-ish. And if you're using these QNAP adapters with a QNAP switch, you're not gonna have any sorts of problems with you know, getting them set up, because they just work with each other, out of the box, like they're meant to. I hope you are now armed with everything you need to get your post-production team up and running at 10 gigabit speeds. But for even more use out of your NAS and to improve it even further, why not learn about SSD caching? Uh, what, Andy, what, what is SSD caching? Well, it allows your NAS to connect at SSD speeds, but only using a small amount of SSDs. You don't need to fill your whole NAS with SSDs. Ooh, that sounds interesting. Hmm, how do I do that? Well, you can find out. Right there, go on, give it a click.